Hi everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and in this video, we're going to be continuing the level editor series. In this video, in particular, we're going to be adding a new object into the level editor. This object is going to be quite different from the other ones because it's going to be part of our lighting system. Now, this system I've already done before on the channel, and you can find a more descriptive version of it in the description below. But the question that I get asked all the time is, how do I make the lighting system work with my camera or a viewport? So we're going to answer that in this video, and once again, you can find links to the previous videos for the level editor and also the source code in the description below. Now before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe because it will help the channel grow. Now let's switch back over to GameMaker and let's check out the room called RM in it. We need to make sure that our room is set up to use a viewport and camera. So once we've selected our room, let's go over to the Inspector tab. Underneath the room settings, you'll find an option for viewports and cameras. You'll want to make sure that you have viewports enabled, and we're also clearing the viewport background. Finally, in viewport zero, just make sure that it's visible so we know that it's active. Now with the room setup complete, let's actually add a new object. This is going to be our camera, so let's name it obj underscore camera. This is going to be a simple camera, and we're not going to have it follow the player, but we're going to be able to move it around with the arrow keys. So let's add a create event and also a step event. Let's maximize the window and switch back to the create event. We're going to make two variables that are going to hold the X and Y position for our camera. Let's call these cam X and we'll have this equal the camera get view X and then the view port zero, which is view camera zero. We'll copy and paste the same, but just change it for the Y components. Now in the step event, we're going to be listening for our keyboard. If we press the left arrow key, what we're going to do is decrease the cam X value. We can copy and paste this and change it to the right arrow key. And in that case, we're going to increase the cam X value. Once again, we'll copy both of these statements. And we'll paste them below and let's change them to the keyboard arrow up and keyboard arrow down. And again, we'll make sure that we are using the cam Y positions instead of the X. Finally, we need to set the camera position based off of those X and Y values. So let's go ahead and call the camera set view position. And we'll pass in the viewport of zero, which is view camera zero. And then we'll pass in the X and Y position. Now to get the camera in our room, we can either drag and drop it in the room. Or what I like to do is have some sort of object, in this case, object in a room. And this is a single object that's going to set up a room for me. I'm going to go to the bottom and I'll just use instance create depth. I'll create it at zero, 00 with the current depth and just spawn in my camera. Now with the camera setup complete, if we run our game, you can see we can do all the same things as we normally can, but we can also use the arrow keys on our keyboard to move the camera left and right up and down. So now let's actually move on to the lighting system. Let's create a new object and call it object light simple. With this object, we're going to assign the light mask that is found in our sprites. Let's also add a draw event, but we'll come back to this later. Now let's create a new object that's going to handle rendering the lights. Let's name this one object light render. For this object, we'll add a create event and also a draw event. For this particular lighting system, we're going to be working with a surface. So that means that we need a variable to hold on to the surface information for us. For this, I'll just name my variable surface and I'll set it to negative one. Inside the draw event, because we're working with surfaces, they can be deleted at any time. So we're always going to make sure that the surface has been created. If it hasn't, then we'll create a new surface. We can use a if surface exists function and just check to see if it's false. Now within this if statement, we need to generate a new surface. Sometimes we would use the room width and height, but right now I want to use the camera's width and height. And the reason for that is because the sprite that's going to be created is going to be a lot smaller than my room. And I want to make sure that the game doesn't eat up too much memory or crash on an older computer. So let's say surface equals surface create. And we'll get the width of our camera by passing in the viewport zero and the height from our camera by passing in viewport zero. Now we have everything and we can actually start coding. First, we need to tell GameMaker to draw to the surface and not the application. Next, we want to make sure that we clear everything on the screen. We're going to be using draw clear alpha, which we can pass in C black and the alpha as 0.8 as a shadow. Now let's tell our object to look for any of the object light symbols within the level. 
We can do this by using a with statement so that it will determine whether or not it finds it within the room. Now, in the chance that it does find one of these objects, we're gonna be doing some drawing on the surface. First, we're gonna to need to grab the coordinates of our camera. This is very important because we're gonna be moving the camera around. Because we are already within the width statement, we need to ensure that we have a proper scope. This is easily achieved by creating local variables cam x and using the camera get view x. We'll do the same with the y component. Now that we have the coordinates of the camera, let's change our blend mode so that we can actually draw a hole in the black surface. We'll set the GPU blend mode to subtract. And now we can draw a hole using the draw sprite extended. We'll pass in the light mask as a sprite, zero for the image index. We'll take the current X position of the light minus our camera's X position. And we'll do the same for the Y position. For the X and Y scale, let's scale it up to four. We'll use zero for rotation. We'll give it a color of C white and alpha as one. Now outside the loop, we can reset the blend mode back to normal. Now we can tell GameMaker that we don't need to draw to that particular surface anymore. So let's ask it to switch back to the default by passing in a surface reset target. The final thing that we need to do here is draw the new surface or sprite. We want to ensure that we're using the camera's coordinates so that it will move with the camera. Let's use a draw surface command and pass in the surface variable. And then we'll use the camera get view X and camera get view Y. The hard part is all done. So now we actually just need to enable the lighting system for our level editor. If it's not already in the object room in it, let's actually go there and ensure that it's being created. I'll put it here at the bottom and I want to set the depth to something very low so that the objects will appear underneath it. Now, when we run our game, you can see the lighting system is in place. We have a nice dark shadow, but we're not able to add any of the simple lights. So let's close this and open up the object debug so we can actually add one of the lights. In the create event, let's edit the selectable objects and add the new object light simple to the list. Now let's add a button so we can click it and add one of the lights to our game. We'll use the UI.button and we'll give it a little sample text. And the function is we're going to be adding the selected index to equal to. Now, if we run our game, you can see that we can create a new light and we can place it down. We have a little bit of an artifact here that we'll fix in just a second, but you can see that we can't select it and really move it around. Let's go back to the object light simple and in the draw event, let's add a comment so it won't actually draw anything. Now let's fix everything back up so we can select the light. Let's clean up our workspace and we're going to open up the object box. We're going to copy the create event and paste it inside the light simple. We'll also copy the step event and paste that inside. Now in the create event, we'll leave everything as is, but over in the step event, let's clean up the labels as we don't need them anymore. Now before we run our game, let's go for the draw event and we'll say if the debug is selected, then let's draw a circle at the X and Y position with the radius of 25. We'll just have an outline circle and let's actually change the color to something like C line. And now if we run our game and we add the light into our system, we're able to select it and move it around. Once we've selected it, you can see we also get the green light. So it's moving and we can also remove the actual instance from our game. Now let's add a few more variables to this light. Back in the create event, let's actually add a variable for scale. We'll set it to four and alpha we'll set to one. Now we're gonna need a way to change these and we'll use the UI to do this. Inside our window, we'll set the alpha to equal ui.slidefloat. We'll set the label to alpha, and the value to alpha. We'll say it can be in between zero and one. For the scale, we'll do the same thing. We'll just change the label to scale and we'll set the minimum value to one and the maximum to 10. Now, if we run our game and we select the light, we can move these variables, but it's not actually doing anything. Luckily for us, using the width event will give us access to these two variables. So let's switch back over to the light renderer. Inside our width statement, we'll change the X and Y scale from four to reference the new scale variable. And we'll set our alpha to reference the alpha variable. Now, if we run our game and select the light and change the variables, you can see it happening on the fly.
And with that, you can add multiple lights to your game, and you can even go further and you can add colors and much more. But for now, I think I'm going to leave it here. Thank you for watching, and if you liked what you watched and you want to see more of it, just click that subscribe button. If you're looking for the full source code to this and many other videos, check out the Patreon site found in the description below. Talking about the Patreon site, I want to thank all my patrons for their support in no particular order. Ira, Helena, Pistol, 39 Digits, Micah, Pseudo, Midnight, Matthew, Game Maker Community, Victor, and Jujubee. Once again, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.